I will come to your house tonight and fuck your world up. I'm gonna find you with the gun. Finding the dog. This is Fortnite, bro. He's 11. Come on. <laughs> This joint is a wavy video. Came out last night. It's speaking of Fortnite, Fortnite's most notorious criminal players. So let's go ahead and see what's been going on in the land of Fortnite. Fortnite. It's one of the Catch people catching bodies in Fortnite. The most played video games in the world that helped popularize an entirely new genre of battle royale shooters and has massively impacted both pop culture and internet culture in a variety of ways for better or for yeah, I think Fortnite has been more positive for the internet or has done more damage to the internet. I think more damage to be honest. Worse, I'll let you be the judge of that. With literally millions of people playing the game at any given time, there's ample opportunity for humorous interactions, gamer rage and hijinks to take place equal? as a result I don't of know about equal. While much silliness has spawned from the popularity of this game, what's often not talked about are the various arrests and criminal cases stemming from Fortnite's existence. Yes, there are people out there literally going to jail over what is essentially a children's video game. There's Today, no I'd way, like bro. to invite you all to pour up a chug jug and come with me as we explore some no. of the most this, okay, bizarre this is crazy. Fortnite crimes. Nigga, this is, this is not crazy templates. Mr. Dead Moth. Okay. One of the most controversial criminal affairs stemming from Fortnite is the case of Mr. Deadmoth. It's a sad story involving an online Fortnite content creator being exposed for brutal domestic violence. This story begins back in 2018 when mm. Fortnite was beginning to peak in popularity. And the subject of this tale is 26-year-old Australian gamer Luke Monday, more commonly known by his online alias Mr. Deadmoth. I've never heard Luke of him. Luke had a job Fortnite working for Telstra community, but we also have chug jug with you, so I'd say equal good and bad. I mean, yeah, I can see that that rice gum song is absolutely fucking horrible, but uh, chug jug with you is a cult classic and is a cultural reset, so I put it. Communications, but his true passion was gaming. Luke, or Mr. Deadmoth, like many others at this time, dreamed of being an online streamer and content creator. He wanted to make this his career instead, and he had been attempting this for some time, initially beginning as a Call of Duty commentary channel on YouTube in the early 2010s, the man toiled in the content creation space for years. That's how I play the game, Chad. time again to muster anything more than a meager income from his videos. However, things changed with the release of Fortnite. After years of fruitless efforts, Deadmoth finally found what he likely thought was his digital salvation. As in the spring of 2018, Deadmoth began streaming himself playing Fortnite, and to the man's surprise, Happy his trash. Twitch channel found the unprecedented success, at least in the context of his own online career thus far. Be it the man's skill at the game or the Bro. novelty of yo old fortnite i know og fortnite just came back for y'all remember when fortnite be it the man remember when the shit was glowing and like that's crazy fortnite looks so different bro skill at the game or simply the novelty of fortnite at the time luke's dead moth streams drew in small crowds and it was beginning to look like his years of hard work in the online content creation space were finally going to pay off however unfortunately though just as dead moth had finally accrued a fan base he would be exposed for something on stream that turned the internet against him and essentially destroyed his career career in an instant. On December 9th of 2018, during a Fortnite stream initiated by Mr. Dead so an fact. argument ensued between him and his partner of five years, Grace Campbell. My thing is, why are you on stream now? Grace was four months pregnant at the time mm. with her third child. The heated dispute would be broadcasted live in front of fans. Yes, I'll, I'll be, yes, yes, okay, I'll be out soon. Just wait! Jesus Christ, I'll be out, yes, I'll be out soon, stop! Stop! I'll be at- No, I'll be at soon. Grace, stop. It all started when Grace asked Luke to take a break from streaming and come eat dinner with her and the family. Let dog stream, bro. Like, let, let, let the man stream, bro. If it's making money, like, let, let bro stream. A seemingly innocuous request, but Luke would refuse to oblige it. Stop, please. I'll be at soon. Grace, just stop. Okay, please. I'll be at soon. I'm gonna start typing. I'll be at soon. I will be out soon. 
Grace, I'll be out soon. Oh, Lord. Frustrated like at what apparently had become a pattern of family neglect from Dead Moth, she then allegedly tossed an object in the man's direction to further. Uh, I don't like where this is going. They, they, Chad, I'm not going to lie. Both of them already look like they on Toxic Time, and I'm not going to cap. Get his attention. Fuck off. Honestly, I'll be out soon. Stop. Like, you throwing, bro, you throwing things at me, bro? That's how you already know the relationship is GG. Whatever he's about to do, I don't, I'm not looking forward to it. But, like, this is how you already know the relationship is GG's. Once you really throwing shit, bro, you throwing shit at me, dog? No, bro. No, it, 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 if they ever get to that point, bro, it's, that relationship is over. Back at you. See how you like it. I'll be out soon. I will. Can you not? I said I'll be out soon. In the video, it appears objects continue to be tossed at Dead Moth's direction. He then becomes enraged, and well, I think the next clip really speaks for itself. No Stop. computer! Stop! Stop! Please! I'll be out soon! <laughs> After this slap, the two quarrel for a bit with Grace demanding an apology from Luke. However, no apology is granted and the conflict escalates further. Oh, that's how you know this, this joint happens all the time, bro. We really went up there and hit, bro, come on, bro. Chat, like, I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. You can't be doing that, bro. He, that's, that's weird as hell. He can't, like, do I agree that both of them is on Toxic Titan? Time? And I do, but like you can't just like be hidden women, bro. Further, especially your wife. On stream at that, on stream is crazy. Dog is unhinged. Like he ain't even try to make it look like this must be everyday from him because he must have forgot he was on stream. Bro is unhinged. I don't care. I'll be out soon. No beauty. Go away. I'll be out soon. Seriously, it's not it's not necessary. I will say sorry, but I'll come out and say I will say sorry to you. Go sorry now. Go away! No, I'm not gonna lie, yeah, bros bro, this this is a unhinged individual, bro. First of all, besides the fact that he's doing this to his wife, which is already crazy in of itself. The lack of clarity that the fact that he is on stream, by the way, he dropped three kills. Brother, he gets your kills up. I ain't going to cap. You know what I'm saying? I would have had 10 by now. But the lack of clarity, the fact that he is doing this on stream, unmuted, bro just don't care. Like, he's sick. He's a sick individual. Disturbing instances of familial violence such as this occur around the world every day. And for most of these cases, nothing is ever done about it. However, thankfully in this case, Mr. Deadmoth's alleged assault had just been live streamed for the entire internet. Did he forget to see. or something? Like, what's and we going all know him? how the internet gets when folks witness an undeniable injustice. Ain't she pregnant too, bro? play out on the nah, web. he said the internet was gonna make sure that this guy he got said. what he deserved. The troops she were rallied and w. online cyber sleuths began work in unmasking Mr. Deadmoth's identity and dug up other information about him so that they could report him to the proper authorities. In short time, Mr. Deadmoth was identified as 26-year-old Australian man Luke Monday of Oran Park in South Sydney. Twitch was also notified of the incident as well. Not only was Mr. Deadmoth issued a permanent ban from Twitch following this incident, he was also arrested by the Sydney police and charged with common assault. All thanks That's to the up. reports of anonymous internet users. W, w Internet. The internet does good things sometimes. Luke, now facing an assault charge, was interviewed by detectives shortly after his arrest. He would tell these detectives that he wasn't the only one responsible for abuse in the household and claimed that Grace was also liable for some abuse as well. Do he I believe that? Yeah, I honestly do believe that. But it's like, that doesn't make what you did no better, bro. Like, you did it on stream, hit her, she's pregnant, like... I don't make it no better, bro. I'm not going to catch you. But, bro, this is my whole thing. Because, Chad, women can be abusive, too. Don't get it f***ed up. The second that a girl puts her hands on me or throws some shit at me, if it's my house, which, you know, it will be. Because, uh, you know, I like I like, I like, like paying for my shit. So, if it is my house, you will be leaving. The Uber will get called, and I will not be paying for it. I ain't going to hold you, bro. My for the second that I see an item <sighs> fools past me, get the f*** off the game hey i'm not gonna hold you take your ass in an uber a lyft walk metro bus subway plane i don't care what type of course you take you know what i'm saying i ain't gonna hold you you're not staying in the house bro 
He relayed that he only acted in self-defense in this particular situation, claiming that his violent reaction was in response to her grabbing at his computer gear and allegedly throwing objects at him. While detectives worked to get to the bottom of what was really going on in this house, the court ordered Luke to separate from Grace for the- What if, uh, she say I'm not leaving? What if she say I'm not leaving? <laughs> <laughs> yeah um we have a report of uh in compliance um in the house uh we're gonna have to take you in like i ain't gonna hold you bro we either gonna do this the funner way or the gun away there's one or two options we gonna do bro either you gonna leave arm extension for the time being he had to move in with his grandmother while Luke, aka Mr. Deadmoth, was compelled to take a sabbatical from the internet, this didn't stop the online world from discussing him. Deadmoth was made into a Twitch pariah of sorts, with countless Reddit threads and Twitter posts chastising the man for his undeniably egregious behavior. The goodwill that Mr. Deadmoth had built within the YouTube and Twitch community, all the hard work in a half decade or so of content creation, wiped out in an instant. That's in addition to his online career well, being destroyed, Luke found his employment at Telstra Communications disrupted because of the incident. Needless to say, despite him losing everything, it would be a challenge to find anyone feeling sympathetic for the guy. Rather, most wanted what they saw as justice, that being they wanted Luke behind bars. However, unfortunately for these people, Luke was never given such a punishment, as a new twist would enter this online controversy. In July of 2019, Luke would plead guilty to slapping his pregnant Somebody partner. Clip that However, That's Grace, the alleged victim in the case, was charged with common assault herself. This apparently resulting from the woman throwing a kettle at Luke on an occasion that was separate from the live streaming incident. I believe yes, it. Yes, it sadly seems that there was something of a culture of abuse in this Why house. Why she look like Onision? Yo, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, he's not even lying, bro. That's the crazy part. He's not, he's not even lying, bro. Yo. Yo, that yo, I'm not gonna lie, the funny thing is he's not even lying, that's crazy incident. Yes, it sadly seems that there was something of a culture of abuse in this household. A statement from the Sydney police says, quote, the woman allegedly assaulted the man and he sustained minor injuries. Miss Campbell was charged with two counts of common assault, domestic violence assault, AW, good charge for her actual too. bodily harm, and contravening a domestic AVO. It goes both While ways. unable to ascertain the result of Grace's charges, Luke would eventually be sentenced for his crime. In 2019, the man was given a 14-month community corrections order, essentially a form of probation granted to the man for good behavior during the time between his criminal act and his trial. I'm unsure of the exact details of this correction order, but I would imagine it involved him being frequently checked in on by a court officer, him being compelled to stay away from Grace, and also likely limited his capacity to maintain an online presence. While many online were disappointed with this outcome, if you look at this situation from a bigger picture, it's honestly miraculous that Luke was even caught because uh, what are the chances of something like this being caught on live stream? If I mean, Luke's an idiot though, I'm not gonna lie. Luke, like, Luke is dead. Like he's not, he's not very bright. I'm not going to cap too. Wasn't because of this stream and the anonymous people online that reported him, there would have never been an investigation into Luke or Grace. And this cycle of abuse could have continued for some time and maybe would have even potentially put their children in danger. In what's likely one of the highest profile criminal cases surrounding Fortnite, that was the story of Mr. Deadmoth. Before we get and into- And it don't look like he was really dropping kills like that, Chad. Our next why did I just get an AliExpress notification, Gamer bro? Gamer rage is something we all deal with from time to time. For Man, I'm here. gonna... I'm gonna break my monitor, I swear. Yes, a moment. That can't be, that cannot be real, bro. That cannot be. I'm gonna break my monitor, I swear. Yo, was he serious? Every lapse of temper is inevitable in competitive gaming. And for it the is? most part, Yo, why did, like, why did he sound so, like, he sounded so not bad, like. Man, I'm gonna... I'm gonna break my monitor, I swear. Yes, a momentary yeah, lapse okay. of temper is exactly. inevitable in competitive gaming. And for What's the, the worst y'all worry that? are harmless. Note, I said- for Like I said, I told y'all before, I've never thrown a controller when I rage. The most I've done is maybe like, slam the desk type shit, maybe. Most part. As some gamers Bro, are so unhinged, their saltiness really knows no bad. And it was definitely either Fortnite or Brawlhalla that made me do that, bro and their temper flare-ups actually land them in jail. 
as was the case with enraged the dude is 76 years old why is he playing fortnite gamer 45 year old michael alaperti michael alaperti is a 45 year old man from huntington new york the man owned and operated a landscaping business at the time and when Jay, he wasn't for the, uh, landscaping he bits. played fortnite on september 17th of 2018 michael was deep in the I trenches of fortnite on this particular I, I was in the last three in the game and got killed by a dude in a corner in a building Yo, that's uh... though he found himself struggling and was getting washed by nearly everyone that he encountered on the map he was getting up by players left and right but there was one guy in this game that really got under his skin noting the incompetence of michael's play an 11 year old boy from long island new york playing under an anonymous pseudonym targeted michael's character oh, he got stream tonight? and said that the 11 year old played with his food a bit shooting at michael with low tier weapons in an effort to create a purpose yeah i'm not gonna lie bro i actually do hope the worst you stream is not but i definitely 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 hope a heater falls on your head, bro. On out fight, only to eventually later kill Michael and steal all of his items. The 45 year old had been completely bodied by an 11 year old. Apparently, after getting f***ed up all night, this was the last straw for Mr. Alaperti. As after getting completely obliterated by this 11 year old. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let's go ahead and guess what he did. He got stream sniped by an 11 year old. At this point, there's nothing really he could do but maybe punch a TV, throw a controller, maybe like some like that but he's on a criminal video at the same time so let's see around 9 p.m eastern time michael would threaten the child by text and voice messages sent on xbox uh -oh. these messages saying that he was going to shoot the 11 year old oh yo yo over fortnite dog I will come to your house tonight and f your world up. I'm gonna find you with the finding the dog. This is f Fortnite, bro. He's 11. Come on. These threats somewhat concerning. The 11 year old would share them with his parents, and the police were notified. As a result of his gamer rage, on September 18th of 2018, at approximately 1:40 in the morning, bro, I have never, bro, I feel like everybody has been threatened once for somebody that that really threatened their life because you beat somebody in a game badly. There is definitely somebody who threatened my life a couple times over like Fortnite or like Brawl Hall or something like that, bro. Purdy was arrested at his Long Island home and charged with second degree aggravated harassment and acting in a manner to injure a child. In New York, aggravated second degree harassment is a crime that punishes individuals who engage in certain actions that are intended to annoy, threaten, or cause another person fear for their safety. It's a class A misdemeanor. Michael's bail was set at $2,500 and an order of protection was issued against him by the boy's family. Sometime after this incident, news crews would go to Michael's neighborhood and tell his neighbors what happened That's and tough. this is their takes on the matter. Neighbors reacted. Disturbing, inappropriate, not okay on every level. It never got that deep, Chad. Better to do with his time than playing video games with an 11 year old. So many parents out there who are not managing their children's time on social media as well as games there's not really any additional updates to share about michael regarding this situation but needless to say keep your gamer rage in check boys yeah it should never get to that point if you're threatening like 11 year olds online that's kind of tough the rest of who the f what is this it is this like what is this cotton candy build this is a uh, gibraltar from apex legends cotton candy version what what kind of like bro it seems like Fortnite players and the people that consume online Fortnite content are under the age of 18 or kids. I don't have a stat on that, but it just seems that way. And with that said, many Fortnite content creators, be it their intention or not, have fan bases that are largely comprised of children. Nothing inherently wrong with this on the surface, and there are dozens upon dozens of big streamers with kid fan bases where there's nothing wrong that being said there are a small handful of disturbing cases where this situation has proved to be extremely problematic as with the case of raul zito raul zito real name raulino de oliveria maciel mm -hmm. was a brazilian content creator known he said was for streaming Fortnite, and was also known for his colorful beard that was dyed pink. Aside I, I don't know why, I just can't trust this 
bro. I don't know why. Like, I can't. I can't. I can't. I, yo, I can't trust this. I can't trust it, bro. Aside from streaming, he had some connections in the television industry as well, with Raul being a presenter for SBT Games, the gaming division for the Brazilian television network SBT. On Raul's Twitch channel, he would routinely stream Fortnite to his young audience, his content growing in popularity alongside the game. This guy was somewhat of a big deal in Latin America. At his peak, Raul had 117,000 followers on Twitch, 149,000 subscribers on YouTube, and close to 159,000 followers on Instagram. Okay. While many Fortnite entertainers tend to despise their child audience, Raul was different in the sense that he seemed to embrace them. The man was said to have often I don't trust this with children on Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, don't trust this bro like he's a bisexual L lorax character bro channel and would sometimes even invite them on stream to play games with him to further exemplify the man's welcoming attitude towards children raul's youtube channel banner showcased a cartoon version of himself portrayed as a scoutmaster like character frolicking in a field with what appeared to be a bunch of children while there's nothing inherently wrong with creating content for a child audience, I ex only explain all this stuff to sort of contextualize the horrific allegations I'm about to fill you in on regarding this guy. As this once thought to be wholesome, zany, and quirky, pink-bearded content creator was nothing more than a monster. In July of 2021, reports surfaced alleging Raul of predatory behavior targeting minors. These reports alleged... Okay, now I'm not going to say that I was already knowing off this, but we knew my... We knew. We knew. I ain't going to count a content creator and Brazilian television industry worker to groom children. According to reports, his ruse involved him contacting children on apps like Instagram and offering them, you know, potential networking opportunities for these kids that wanted to be actors or get into TV or perhaps become gaming content creators themselves. The ages of these alleged victims that Raul reached out to are reported to be from the ages of 10 to 14. This man's alleged activity was exposed after one of the child's mothers reached out to the police and claimed that their son had suffered sexual abuse from the months of February to May of 2021. Another child also claimed to have been sexually abused as well by Raul. Raul is literally accused of raping children under the age of 14 in the way I don't even have no words bro it's just a certain level of sick you have to be in life my name. I just won't guarantee you a sentence in hell, bro wake of these allegations on July 27th of 2021 Raul Zito would be arrested in the city of Florianopolis and Santa Catarina <laughs> I thought they said Florida Nopolis. I was about to say they evolved and made Florida an entire new section, bro. Florida Nopolis sounds like a lawless Florida zone, bro. Five star Florida zone. I thought them Florida Nopolis at first. I was about to say that sounds like Danger Zone 101. Of quote, rape of the vulnerable. In Brazil, this specific charge is given to people that victimize individuals under the age of 14. Mm -hmm. Initially, when this bizarre story first hit the press, many initially didn't talk about it because they were confused as if it was actually Raul Zito that was being implicated of these crimes, just because of how shocking they were. However, any doubts that Raul Zito was the one being investigated were squashed after SBT Games, the television network that he worked for, issued a statement regarding the matter. Below is a note from SBT Games about events involving streamer Zito. Raul Lino de Oliveira Maciel, known as Raul Zito, is no longer part of the SBT game streamers, of which he has it's been like, a bro, part of. It's like, bro, why would you throw that all away, bro? I don't ever get that. Like, why would you throw all your shit away, bro, for, like, like some, some butt, bro, some butt that's not even legal? Why would you throw that away? Since last year, and therefore had no right to use the broadcaster's name in negotiations outside of SBT Games' properties. SBT awaits the clarification of the facts and the results of the investigation, which resulted in the YouTuber's arrest this Tuesday morning. In August of 2021, about a month after Raul's arrest for alleged SA, Twitch, the platform that he streamed on the most, would finally ban him. And with about that, time. Raul's streaming empire had collapsed. Following his arrest, seven more Don't children back, came forward reporting abuse. How many? 
collapsed. Following his arrest, seven more children. Seven? Seven? Well, you're going to hell, buddy. Yeah, you're going to hell. I'm about to hold you. He's GG's for him. He's, he's going to hell. I ain't going to lie. He's going to lie. Children came forward reporting abuse, which resulted in additional charges being levied against Raul. If found guilty, this man could face up to 15 years in prison. It should be more than 15, to be honest. The Fortnite fight. As has been mentioned numerous times in this video, there are a lot of kids that play Fortnite, and kids like to shit talk each other. Our next story involves some kids that shit talked each other so much that one of their fathers stepped in, resulting in a physical altercation. No which way. bizarrely enough brings us to a bizarre story involving San Francisco 49ers player Chikezi Okafor assaulting someone. A 49ers Chikezi Okafor player? is an accomplished athlete. In the early 90s, while playing high school football, he became a finalist for the Indiana Mr. Football Award and co-captain his team to the 1993 state championship. GK was offered scholarships and decided to play college football at West Lafayette, Indiana for Purdue University. A competitive player with somewhat this of a build is insane. He built like a football, bro. I look like this bite sharks. But temper, it's important to note that during his tenure as a college athlete, Chike was suspended from Purdue's football team in 1997 for poor conduct that was, quote, detrimental to the team. Now, fast forward to the present and Fortnite. Chike himself wasn't a big Fortnite player, but his son certainly was. The former athlete's son played Fortnite near constantly and frequently would compete with another child who was a neighbor of the family. The two often visiting... Chad, by the way, talking Bill's character, bro. Each other's homes to cooperatively compete in battle royales and also playing with each other online as well. Despite playing with each other regularly, Let's fries, I read it. These two kids were said to have had something of a quarrelsome relationship often getting enraged and trash talking each other over headsets when they lost in duos. This contentious state of affairs also seemed to extend with Chike, the boy's father, and the parents of the neighbor kid as well. As it said, there was some unspoken animosity between the two families for unspecified reasons. And one day in December of 2022, this animosity would boil over. In December of 2022, Chike's son was playing Fortnite online with the neighbor's son. And apparently at some point during the play session, the boys got into a bit of a spat over voice chat. A spat. This argument was overheard by Chike and left him extremely irritated. With Chike, I guess, feeling that this neighbor kid was picking on his son. Apparently this had been happening somewhat frequently and it must have been the straw that broke the camel's back because Chike would become enraged. After the voice chat- Are you really about to go see- the the dude your son is beefing with in a fist fight bro vacation between chike's son and the neighbor kid the former professional football player brazenly stormed his way over to his neighbor's household and barged in to confront the kid and his family over what he thought was bullying shocked by what the enraged he, what man's he, he said? visit the family naturally demanded him to leave but chike wasn't going nowhere according to police reports chike rushed into his neighbor's home and picked up the boy's father Father. The former defensive end body slamming and throwing the man against the wall while also at one point delivering a vicious karate chop to the guy. Imagine you just a random wide neck like hammerhead shark built motherfucker run at you at full speed and you know he's athletic because he played for the uh, 49ers I think. So imagine he just run at you and you have no context bro and he body slammed you you wake up in a hospital. Do, do, do. Hi sir how are you? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Dr. Uh, I'm Dr. Carl, and uh, yeah, you got body slammed over a Fortnite match gone wrong. Like, bro, what the f Like, that's what you body slammed me over, bro? F Fortnite? Because my son was talking sh Fortnite? The mother of the neighbor kid, hearing the commotion from upstairs, ran down to break up the fight. She was unsuccessful in this regard and called police. The spectacle was quite the dramatic affair, and it's said that screaming could be heard throughout the entire neighborhood. When police arrived, they heard these screams and barged into the residence with guns drawn. And when police walked in, Chi stopped beating the out of his neighbor. While he certainly got the best of the neighbor kid's dad, he was gonna be facing some criminal charges now. Chike would be arrested and charged with battery with injury and residential entry. The Is that hard as you can't talk to anymore? After being arrested. Which bro, I, he never let his son play another game, bro. Between kids results in an enraged former NFL player beating up his neighbor, 
that was the story of GK. Okay, that was crazy. Fortnite carjacker. Who's this thug? When playing games online, you never know who you might run into, and there's some people out there that are willing to take advantage of you, such as the case of the Fortnite carjacker. This story all begins in the spring of 2021, after a group of Fortnite players formed a Snapchat community to post Snapchat community is and crazy. talk about the game together. While this group wasn't implicitly created to facilitate criminal activity, what people didn't realize was that there was an individual in this group that was capable of some pretty foul sh that individual truly humble under god sterling christopher butler a 20 year old sterling christopher butler i can't take no serious name sterling bro with the last name butler i can't take him serious i'm not gonna lie to you dorchester county in south carolina in april of 2021 sterling using an anonymous pseudonym would make friends with the victim of this story in the snapchat group chat the two would become friends, discussing strategies to use in-game, and often played with each other online and communicated. Sterling and his would-be victims acquaintance you got a founding father name. would turn into a friendship of sorts. And at one point, Sterling would bring up the idea of meeting in real life. Little did the individual he was meeting up with know that he had plans for criminal activity. Sterling's plot involved him contacting this individual through Snapchat and telling them to wait in a public location, presumably so that they could meet up, hang out, and go play Fortnite together. This individual would mm -hmm. oblige the Pre -back door and waited for Sterling at a specified location. After some time, the victim was approached by a man wearing khaki pants, a black sweater, and a purple bandana. This individual, who was indeed Sterling, had no intentions of playing games with this guy. Sterling ordered his Fortnite gaming buddy to get out of the car. The victim complied, and as he got out, he noticed three other men dressed similarly to Sterling, brandishing weapons. Sterling and his goons got it. I'm not gonna lie, we gotta blame the dude over that, the dude who, who set that up. Bro, I'm not gonna hold you, not even Sterling, the other dude. Yo, there's no way you got robbed over Fortnite, bro. There's no way you got, in broad daylight, got carjacked over a Fortnite meetup, bro. Into the car and they drove off. He had been carjacked by a Fortnite player. You're the muted? Fortnite oh, sorry. Victim would I didn't report know. this bizarre catfish robbery style incident to police. As cops began to investigate, they asked about his Fortnite buddy Sterling. And when the gamer went to look him up on his phone, he found out that he had been blocked. The police, however, were able to subpoena Snapchat for the IP address mm. that would eventually lead to an request. email Lucky. address associated with Sterling. It's important to note that the victim in this case didn't know that Sterling's name was Sterling this entire time. I've only been saying it like that to make the story more comprehensible. This information would allow them to connect the Snapchat account with Sterling. The police were also able to locate the stolen car, which was parked at a North Charleston apartment Tim, happy complex birthday, bro. in South Carolina. Police would investigate this complex, eventually leading them to the arrest of Sterling Christopher Butler, the 20-year-old Fortnite fraudster of sorts. Sterling was thrown in jail and hit with various charges related. He's a dumb. He deserves that, bro. Leading to robbery. The Neko Kun incident? If I was to tell you a Fortnite player was arrested, you would probably assume the reason for this was sexual assault or they possessed CP or something like that. Well, that wasn't the case for this Japanese Fortnite player put in handcuffs. Yude Nishiwaka is a Japanese Fortnite content creator who goes by the name Niko Kun. Niko Kun began making content in 2018 and had a heavy focus on Fortnite in his streams. The man's channel now boasts over 900,000 subscribers, mm. and Niko Kun has been quite active in Fortnite's competitive scene with his gaming team known as Mr. Was any of y'all competitive in Fortnite or just played it for fun? Though, around the peak of his career, he would get into some legal trouble. And like I said earlier, it's not what you might expect. It all begins on March 11th of 2022 when a young Japanese man was arrested and taken to jail. When this anonymous individual was in jail, police searched Jeremy, his belongings you can just and discovered 1.2 grams of cocaine in his possession, this coke being stored in a bag. No However, way. when questioned, this man would claim that it wasn't his coke and was in fact his friend's Yude. 
or Nico Green. Hear? Upon hearing oh, okay. this, Nico was compelled his to be interrogated coat. himself. Okay. And at this time, w. detectives by the way. end up finding a half a gram of marijuana in his belongings while he was being searched. It's crazy. And his friend did not stand on business. His friend ratted him out quick. To reports, Nico was charged with both possession of coke and marijuana. And the way they're handling this just sounds ridiculous, but I really have to boil it down to being some Japanese because that country has a no tolerance policy when it comes to drugs hmm. i'm also very interested in reading you nico's explanation of how he got the marijuana he says this quote two and a half years ago i bought it from a black person what the f yo it's just yo it's japan i'm not saying there's no black people in japan why they have to be a black person why does it have to be a black person i'm not gonna hold you we already knew you was going cap we knew you was going lie we knew you was going to tell a, a, a tale we knew you was going fib why you gotta be a black person bro now it's f you why was that even included why why did you even have to put that in the description bro in one of tokyo's bar districts i smoked marijuana to act cool but smoking it makes you zone out and you can't play video games well so i made a point to not smoke sloppy while I nuts playing. i remember you bro while i'm unable to, to ascertain the punishment that nico received from this situation i can tell you that as a result of it he lost a sponsorship with omen computers neko kun in response to the news about neko kun we will end our sponsorship activities for Mr. Clan, which was his gaming team. And that's really all there is to report on this one. I got man, what did you do? The Fortnite swatting. Hey, that dress that dresser can't kind of go hard. I ain't going to cow with the shirt though, gang. With Fortnite being as popular as it is, it's no surprise that it's one of the most streamed games on the internet. Many streamers have made careers off the back of Fortnite, with some rising to prominence in the community simply due to their elite skill at the game. Our next subject is an individual who did just that. Kyle Gearsdorf, an American pro Fortnite Some of y'all know who he is, I've never heard of uh, online following Uga, in the Uga, I've never heard of While his lifestyle as a pro gamer certainly comes with perks such as fame and fortune, there is a dark side to being a pro gamer as there's guys out there that hate your guts and some of them are willing to put your life in danger to simply make a point. Kyle Gearsdorf, born December 30th of 2002, is better known online so by his winner, he built like that? Booga. Booga is a three-time Fortnite Champion Series winner and won the Fortnite World Cup in 2019. Skill at the game is matched by only a handful of players in the world. Man, I'm not gonna hold you, bro. On a 1v1, I'm smoking that. Bro, y'all, y'all know how we come in. The young man was first introduced to the battle royale title by his own father, who also shared Kyle's interest in gaming. Kyle was introduced to the game shortly after its release. An avid fan of FPS games, he would become completely addicted. His addiction paying okay. off in elite okay. gameplay. In 2018, Kyle began playing for the esports team No Clout. After much success, he would move to the Sentinels gaming team from 2019 until 2022. Currently, he plays for the Dig. Nita's esports organization. His YouTube channel at the time of this recording has over 4 million subscribers. So what do you and his do? Twitch channel has over 5.3 million followers. Booga is renowned by nearly everyone in that. the Fortnite community for his skill. But this guy might have some of the worst luck ever when it comes to popular Fortnite content creators. As unfortunately, he's been subjected to numerous controversies over the years, almost none of which have been created by him. Mm. In July of 2019, after a hard-fought tournament, Kyle managed to win the Fortnite World Cup solo competition at okay. only 6 16 years old. Oh, this he was 16 when he won it? That's crazy. $3 million dollar prize. And they'd be like, and, and your mother sweet telling you to get off that game. That game ain't going to do nothing for you. But making him one of the highest earning players in all of esports. This was an incredible accomplishment for a gamer of his age, but sadly, there were those out there that wanted to spoil the moment for this guy. Yes, unfortunately, when an online content creator makes a remarkable accomplishment in the public eye, there's a small group out there that will attempt to launch mean-spirited attacks to ruin these moments. In the case of Kyle, just minutes after winning the championship, Kyle's Twitch and Twitter accounts were both compromised by hackers. Individuals who um, got it. would brag about their deed, promoting their own Twitter. It's account. crazy. Fortnite community is so toxic. Being the biggest player must put a big 
target on your back. Bounce in front of that millions sucks. and stating, quote, we in the VIP lounge popping bottles. They also announced a live stream would be occurring in 10 minutes. What followed were the hackers commandeering Booga's Twitch channel and spending money from the account that was linked to his Twitch channel to give out gifted subscribers to the people who visited the page. Oh Regis hacking here, you know, one of the biggest esports creators ever, all of his sh with millions of followers is just being commandeered. Which this I'm really not lying, my heart would be my bro. I'd actually probably shed real tears. Had to have sucked because, you know, Kyle likely wanted to celebrate yeah, we will, this right moment after this. and really just be present, but now he had to worry about his livelihood, you know, being compromised. This situation proved to be quite the headache, but thankfully Kyle would manage to get his accounts back. And despite the infraction, he would later go on to celebrate his victory. However, this wouldn't be the end of the onslaught from his jealous online haters. As after this incident, There's malicious no way, online bro. detractors- It's like, why they hate, like, like, bro, you can't even do nothing good on the internet, bro, about motherfuckers hating you, bro. You start to get popular, people hate on you, bro. You start to do good in the game, people hate on you. It's like anytime somebody's doing good, there's always some hated motherfucker out there who's going to ruin it for you. Would launch a campaign against him that would put Booga's life in danger. About a month after the hacking, in August of 2019, Kyle was live streaming himself playing Fortnite with his esports team. All is well initially, but sometime into the broadcast, something seems amiss. At one point during the stream, you can hear Kyle talking to his father, who appears off screen. His father seemed to have been trying to get his attention, but Kyle, busy with the stream, tells him that he can't talk and is in the middle of a game. I'm just weak now. Do you have bandies or any heals? Of your solo. I, I got no one heals, so no weak, bro. Literally so weak. Okay. You just earned another hater. You just earned your first 600, buddy. Sorry. What are we screaming? I... Dad, I actually can't. All right, we're not gonna have the mask the whole time. You have to drop the kills. No, I'm kidding. You However, can take However, his dad away. persists in trying to get his attention, and you know his dad's privy of him being a streamer. So Kyle thinks this is. Kind How long you think you and Sala will last for a big controversy like tomorrow? Kind of weird and begins to worry that something is seriously wrong. So he gets up and leaves the game. You know, his esports team still trying to capture the W in this Fortnite game, and Kyle goes to check out what's going on. Hey. I know where Harvey's in. Come with you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm out of mouth now. Swatted. I'm literally, I have no heals. Shockwave, out of zone. This is, I'm not gonna lie, this is crazy. Bro heard he got swatted. He's not getting off that game, bro. They come in there with, 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 with ARs and, and SMGs and and he like, I got swatted. Bro, he's still playing the game. He not letting that go. He trying, he trying to clutch up. Got it. Wait. Nice. Can you charge him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got him. No, I'm uh, the mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He bring really me that trying to sell this mask, bro. Who the f are you talking to? <laughs> bro is literally talking to his dad right now. He had to sell. Booga's team is initially confused on why Kyle had just randomly dipped out and left them to dry. However, despite his absence, his skilled teammates still managed to get a victory royale even with Kyle AFK. Okay, that's but of why. course now they were worried about Kyle. What was the deal here? Well, it turns out that he had been swatted. Yes, apparently an anonymous that's online that. detractor had so called Kyle's lame, local bro. police department claiming that Kyle... Yo, they really need to like make new laws around this. I already know there's a law around swatting if you get caught as GGs, but like, I feel like that's not harsh enough, bro. Like, I feel like you this needed you needed to track people from doing it in general, bro. Like, if you even try to do this, yo, it's GGs for you, bro. Like, it's too many Kyle people doing shot this. His dad and taking his mom hostage. Said he just shot his that's what they called him on, bro. That's crazy. Father with an AK this devious swatter was very meticulous with his efforts as he made sure to call this in when Booga's stream had a peak viewership of like several thousands like, of loser bro this anonymous guy was likely looking for Booga to get hurt on camera thankfully though this swatting didn't result in violence kyle would later explain to his stream that while the cops were initially hostile during the swat one of those that arrived actually recognized him as they were a local in the community and were familiar oh, with the streaming activity when this cop realized it was kyle he told everybody to chill out and the swat was essentially over they realized it was bogus thankfully nobody was harmed and what could have potentially been a bloody situation That's in the crazy, wake of bro. this incident people don't really realize that bro they could really smoke you in a swatting situation bro they they come in there deep as breaking down the doors with ak-40s they could really smoke your 
the right then and there, bro. Grove Township authorities in Pennsylvania opened an investigation to track down the individual responsible for calling in the SWAT. At the time of me recording this video, the investigation is still ongoing. Booga, by all accounts, is one of the least problematic Fortnite streamers out there, and I hate that there's people, you know, that are willing to mess with him to yes, this okay. degree just because he's successful. Hopefully, those who swatted him will get punished. W video, bro. Um, yeah, some of these, a lot of these, well, a lot of these motherfuckers here is weird as I ain't even going cap, bro. Like, I don't even know how some of these is, why some of these motherfuckers did what they did knowing they have the stuff they got going on that they have going on. So that's actually crazy. I ain't going to lie. But if you're watching this on YouTube, Twist Blue Ride in the description. Come to the stream, come to the stream. And yeah, I BG. All right.